Let's bring up Mr. Mike Doan. Mike Doan is a full-time lecturer at the University of Washington's Information School where he teaches graduate courses in knowledge management, information management, and taxonomy ontology development. He's also a senior level consultant with over 18 years experience in information management and a deep background in information science and content management. And I was lucky enough to take Mike's taxonomy class a few years ago at UW and uh, found it challenging and rewarding. And I'm really excited that he's taking over the information architecture program at UW because I know he's going to challenge the next generation of information architects to be great. So please give your uh, round of applause for Mike Doan. Thanks, Stuart. Thanks, everyone, for showing up today. Um, thanks for the nice introduction, Stuart. It's too late to change your grade. <laughs> can't do that. Nor do I have any fish chips. But what I am going to talk about today, in 45 minutes, I promise you 45 minutes, is what we are now doing at the Information School with regard to information architecture. So I did notice, which is great, on the slide, a lot of the people that are volunteering for working here are former or have in some way to do with the iSchool. So the iSchool here has got a pretty broad reach, which is exciting. What we want to see, Stuart, for example, a lot of students out there, current and former students in the audience right now. What we want to see, though, is uh, the iSchool stretch out a bit more and have some influence outside of this in Seattle Northwest area. And that's why we're taking a really hard look at revitalizing the information architecture specialization at the school. And you think that since information is in our name and it's also in information architecture that we would have a pretty solid foundation in IA. IA is a specialization right now. However, what we're doing and what I've been tasked with since uh, joining full time at the UW is to revitalize it, to redefine it and they create a curriculum around that that students can take in an ordered fashion. Students are constantly asking, what should I do next after taxonomy or the introduction to IA classes I teach? And we have been somewhat late in revitalizing our program so students can just go through and have a program. So that's all I want to talk to you about today. The second thing I want to do is emphasize that this is still in formation. We're still working on it. I also want to maybe cast a little, to use the fish metaphor, even further, and now I'm done, further <laughs> to ask uh, you if you want to provide us some feedback, that would be very valuable, number one, and you can email me directly at the university, or two, uh, if you are in some way interested in teaching at this university level courses in this field, I would like to talk to you today. And we are constantly looking for people like yourselves who are industry folks, know how to communicate, and also want to be a part of this sort of revitalization of IA at the University of Washington. So let's get started. That's what we're doing. And this is the title of my uh, brief talk. But what we really are looking for is look around the room. You are the current generation of information architect related people. There are students now in high school and just starting their undergraduate careers who are going to be the next generation. The folks you're going to manage as IA information architect managers, they're now waiting to not take your place, but, but to work with you on projects that Stuart and others have been talking about. So that's what we're going to, the discussion points today. That's me, a uh, full-time lecturer at the University Information School, that's the iSchool's website if you wanted to go take a peek at what we're doing overall. And then that's my email address, and I invite you to reach out via that or come up to me afterwards and we can connect about, uh, about anything you, you see that we talk about today. As Stuart said, the courses I teach are graduate level courses. I teach in the, in the MSIM program, MSIM, Masters of Systems Information Management which a lot of folks have. I have an MLIS degree, which is <laughs> from the iSchool, same place. And that's a little more on the library side. So those of you who are LIS students in the audience, uh, both sides of the house, so to speak. We also have an informatics program at the, uh, in the iSchool for undergraduates teaching the same thing. The idea is that an MSIM graduate has a little bit more focus on technical, and the libraries, uh, students have more focus on libraries, of course, that makes sense. 
But what we're trying to do is get information architecture across both, or all, actually all three of those areas within the iSchool, such that students can learn at their level uh, about information architecture. So I teach the Introduction to Information Architecture course in the autumn, right now, this morning. Uh, I was teaching the what is, what is referred to as the Taxonomy Ontology class. I do a lot of work professionally in taxonomy and ontology work. And I, that class is, again, an in-sum class in the winter. And then in spring, up next quarter, I'll teach knowledge management, which is a little bit more uh, higher level than information architecture about knowledge, KM, knowledge management, things like this. So those are the three areas that I specialize in. I also work in the field and have worked at Stuart Set a long time in this, and I help clients with all the stuff that we had talked about earlier, but mostly around taxonomy and ontology development. What I'm going to cover, I'm going to introduce what we're doing, which I've been doing for the last couple of minutes. Uh, we have to, uh, we, we had to, we decided to come up with a definition for IA. In order to create a curriculum, we had to define what we thought and think IA means. This might not, it's not as colorful and flavorful as that definition you saw, but we needed to come up with a definition of it because we know that there are various ways to describe it in order for us to move forward. So I'll talk to you a little bit about that. Not set in stone, appreciate your opinion on it, but we had to start somewhere, and I'll show you that. Uh, we had to, and we're creating a curriculum right now, we have an existing curriculum around information architecture, but we feel like we need to modify it uh, for a lot of reasons. We need to create a, a, a tighter specialization track so students can take a beginning course, a middle course, and an end course, have a portfolio at the end of that that they could show employers. We really now are striving to equip students with a, a broad set of skills but a definitive portfolio to show potential employers. Rather than just the ability to talk about IA, we want to be able for them to show IA. And the last thing I'm going to do is just talk about um, who these folks are, give you a chance to look at them. <laughs> if you probably turn to your right or left, you probably see three or four of them in the audience right now. What I'd like from you, again, please talk to me later about your ideas for this. We're open to this, we're revitalizing it now, and the track, we hope to have the specialization locked down by autumn of this academic year, oh, sorry, next academic year, 2016. So this is still in flux, but narrowing quickly to, uh, to permanence so that we can create some courses around it. Um, in, uh, <clears throat> the information architecture specialty track, uh, ideas about courses. I'll show you some courses that we have right now. Pluses and minuses would like your feedback. And the last thing, like I've already said, is that we, I'd love to speak with you if you're interested in potentially teaching uh, in the iSchool. I, I would love to promote folks who could do that. We're all looking, again, constantly looking for folks who know this field really well and want to communicate that to younger students. So introduction. Uh, here's our challenge at the iSchool. We currently offer um, information architecture related courses but we haven't curated the track. And I don't know, we really know about academic specializations, but we want to have a track of courses a student can take, sign up for, with a beginning, middle, end, options to take further classes, but a core set of classes across information architecture that conveys everything from theory to practice to tool set, in addition to being able to build something from autumn quarter to spring quarter that is real, tangible, and can be exported or somehow finished to show an employer. We also have in the iSchool the Capstone event. And those of you who have done Capstone know what I'm talking about. Those of you who are thinking about or worrying about Capstone right now for this year, next year, that's the, culmina oh, sorry, that's the culmination event. But that's not quite what we're talking about with the IA specialization. We want to be able to have students leave with something to show an employer. And so we haven't done a great job yet of doing that. Uh, second, we don't yet, and those of when I say we, it's not the royal we, it's we in the iSchool, don't see a clear uh, definition for information architecture in the field. There are many, as you guys know. We can't have many definitions to start a curriculum. We need a definition to build from, and so that's what we haven't done yet, but we're going to, we're, and we're in the process of doing that. Uh, we have heard from many students that they want to study IA in one form or another, but that we haven't quite uh, got that together yet so they know what to do. Nor have we, in a way, defined all the different classes that we offer 
in a sequence or an association. I know it's horrible for a taxonomist to not be able to map things together. Kills me every day, but that's what we're working on. And but students have told us that they want to do this, and employers have said the same thing. Employers that are part of our different boards have come in, and we talk. I talked to the informatics board with employers from Boeing and Tableau and other places who really want to hire information architects, but they're still somewhat uncertain that we've trained them correctly to handle the type of information architecture that they do. And so that's one thing I want to talk about today. So first and foremost, we needed to define information architecture in order to prepare this curriculum. And we looked around and we debated this, as all of you have done, I'm sure, in the past with coworkers and folks who were here at these sorts of things. But we needed to come up with something internally that we thought was indicative, reflective of the market, but understandable. And so what we came up with was this idea of working behind a screen and in front of a screen. With the screen, in essence, as this fluid membrane in between those two types of activities. And I think you already sort of know where we're going with this with regard to IA and UX, but I wanted to just lay out a sort of a visual of how we're starting to think about this such that we can start to prepare this curriculum. So we think that IA are the work, the activities, the products, the things that are done behind the screen to bring information to the screen. And that UX then would, of course, since it's user-based, would then take the, men, the screen and then move out towards the user. And that the intersection of what UX and IA does is that screen. We know that we have a lot of overlap. That's a given. But IA's work tends to be work that UX oftentimes doesn't do and vice versa. And so we had to come up with this paradigm. Bob Boyko and I put it together. And we said, well, let's just make the screen the point of intersection, and that's how we will bifurcate. That's how we'll divide this out. And so these are all the things that you guys are familiar with, right? These are the things that many of you do, that many of you have done, that many of you are involved in as information architects. And this is more or less uh, topical in a way. Yes, it's practice, and yes, it's what, what people would do. There's some, not really any work products here. There's some things missing, and we have, so we've sort of boiled it up into a few things, like for example, we know IAs will work on asset management projects. Well, asset management, we, it's kind of under content management, metadata and search, systems integration has a lot to do with back-end database integration. But this is where we had to draw a line, so to speak, with the screen to emphasize that this is what we want to teach. These are the kinds of topics that we want to teach about, and these are the kinds of classes that we would need to include. Is it everything? No. But it's a start. And we had to put something on, on paper, so to speak, and this is where we ended up. We know full well that there are user experience activities that go on in front of the screen, user research, persona development, all these types of things. Some of us have done that, prototyping, things like this. But that's an area where we have to stop or, or, or show a difference because at the same time we're doing the IA specialization track at the high school, we're also redeveloping our user experience track. And what we don't want is a clash. What we do want is a, a meshing and a merging. And what we also want to show students is if you want to be more involved in the user side, uh, UX track would be perfect for you. If you want to be more involved in the data, information, modeling, architecting side, the IA specialization would probably be right for you. If you want to do both, perfectly fine. A lot of classes will touch on both topics, but we want to set it up to where we can teach students at the undergraduate and graduate level uh, in depth about these kinds of topics so that, and there's a clear understanding of the difference between the two. Okay? So that's kind of what I want to have some, some comments about for you because I know you've got a lot of, of uh, opinions about this too. And, and it doesn't matter on the platform. Regardless, it's a website, it's a mobile device, it's an iPad, it's a, it's a portal. It doesn't matter. We still feel that the information architecture and information architects would be concerned mostly with what goes on behind the screen and that UX is going to be what's in front of the screen and out. Okay? So what does that mean for a curriculum? Well, 
we needed to define information architecture in order to prepare, prepare a curriculum and train students. And so this is what the current model looks like. Um, these are, this is from the uh, iSchool website, and it does outline what we think is information architecture. It does cover some of the basics of what we do. For example, I teach the IMT 530 course, which is the taxonomy and ontology class. I also teach the introduction to information architecture, which is not up here. So you can see we sort of have, as you read through this, we sort of have a, a scattering, a scatter of different classes that all relate back to, pardon me for going back, this, all relate back to all the courses and topics that we see on the left-hand side there. But as you can see, um, they're not together in any sort of unified pattern. And that's what students are missing, and I think that's where we're, we are selling short the practice of IA from the iSchool. So what should we do? Well, let's talk about IMSIM program students just for a second, or the IMSIM program, because that's where I teach and that's where we're really going to focus most of this IA work right now, is that IMSIM students typically, and the IMSIM program typically, tends to be more focused on technology and, uh, rather than UX folks. Now, let's not say UX is bad. You, we're, we're doing a UX specialization track in the high school right now as well. But you, you kind of get this sense that there's more, for MSIM students in the MSIM program, there's more, for, more focus on back-end technology. That's the key point there. Um, but they're not CS students. They're not computer science students. And the big difference is between CS computer science, I think, and the iSchool is that the iSchool graduate students are more focused on information as a foundation or basis rather than just pure computer science. There are some very technical folks in the iSchool in the MSIM program but they're still focused more on information management than just pure code writing. Can someone in the iSchool write code? Absolutely. Can some MSIM students write code right now? Absolutely. But are they CS, pure CS students? No. And the difference is, again, that layer of information management that's underneath all this. Um, the third point, these students in MSIM tend to be builders, not designers. And uh, my colleague Bob Boyko likes to go into this a lot, but the idea is that MSIM IA students tend to build more than they do visual design. Of course, you're designing data modeling, you're doing these other things, but they tend to be builders, behind the scene builders, rather than in front of the screen designers. Yes, they can have fancy haircuts and drink expensive coffee, like a UX designer, no offense. But these folks are gonna tend to be more behind the scenes. Many of us have worked on projects where the emphasis was on the front of the screen to the neglect of the back of the screen. I've seen some projects where beautiful designs were created and UX developers did an amazing job, couldn't be built. That's a shortcoming that we're trying to solve here. In that, we could train IAs to talk to UX people so that there is, in an ideal world, an understanding of if you have a Drupal content management system, there are certain things that can't be done in visual design on the front end, and I've seen this happen as well, unfortunately. So both need to work together, and that's really where we're gonna go with this. So we see them as more builders than designers, and the person behind the system. They're not gonna be as versed in, say, C-sharp, JSON as a CS person. They will know it. They'll be able to write in it, oftentimes. But they'll also understand the implication of using something like that in an information system, like on a front end. That's where we're going with this. So, we think that this, this specialization will allow students to build a job portfolio. As I mentioned, we wanna have the A to Z of of an information space design and output done before they leave the specialization. We want to focus on job ready skills. We constantly scour monster for job descriptions for information architects to make sure that we are aligned with what the industry wants versus what we are, or in accordance with what we are teaching. We often find students, come, I find students come back to me and say, I just looked up this IA job that I found on monster. It has nothing to do with what we're doing here. And I'm like, well, either the job is wrong <laughs> or we're missing the point. 
And I think it's a little bit of both, okay? There is job descriptions for IA jobs that are completely off of what we would normally consider to be IA, but some companies, like for example a Boeing, is looking for a certain type of information architect, and that's what we want to nail. We want to get those done. Uh, employers see both academic and professional standards. I, as an employer, I would want to see someone has gone through the rigor of graduate school training in information architecture and yet knows how to interact with a UX designer, a brand marketing person, a interface designer. And the last thing, of course, is that we want students to be employed in the field as practitioners and, like you guys, leaders. We want our iSchool graduates to be leaders in this field moving forward. So here's where we're at. So this is currently what we're proposing, and this is where I'd like your comments back, if you, if you would be so kind sometime today. Uh, we've got a core track set up here, which is the Introduction to Information Architecture, which is the fourth edition of the Polar Bear Book Plus. We like the Polar Bear Book. It's a standard in the industry. Lou's great, but we have added to it. So we're adding to the foundations of information architecture, so it's Polar Bear Plus. I don't know what the next evolution of a polar bear would be, but that's what this would be. That's the introduction, and that's the core course. The second one would be what we're, I'm teaching right now, foundations in taxonomy and ontology. And the last one is going to be information structures, where you actually go in and do the XML, JSON, build out what you've designed from the fall quarter, what you have named in the winter quarter, and you would build it in the spring quarter. At the end, you would have a, 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 a site, an information space, that would be built that could be shown to employers. It would not include interface design, branding, things like visual design, things like that. That's not what we do, but it would be enough to say you could skin this any way you want and here's a core information structure that you've built that they could, every student who takes this track could have. You see the core, uh, sorry, the um, sort of adjunct or ancillary courses on the top and bottom if you want to focus more on taxonomy. We feel that naming uh, is a massive part of what we should do in information architecture. Uh, just simply controlling vocabularies and names across an entire enterprise is extremely important for us. So that's the top track. Those are the current classes that we offer. The bottom track, same thing. It's a bit more on the information system side. It has to do with database management, things like this. So that's our, that's our plan right now. We know we need some more courses in here to fill this out. Uh, this is woefully inadequate in some areas, and that's where I would ask you to throw a few ideas my way. And I repeat this slide three different times, and we need to train students. That's, that's why we're here, both academically and job readiness is what we're supposed to be training them students for, and I'm hopeful that we're doing that job. Well, what do these students look like? That's what they look like. Right? That is a group of M. Simmer interns last summer at Alaska Airlines. They went down there, had a great internship at, at Alaska Airlines. Some of them were in my class. And some of them have been hired on permanently in Alaska based on that internship. And they haven't even graduated yet. So we know that the field is, is in need of people that we train. And I want to make sure that we've trained them the best possible way. Some of you may recognize these folks. And they're down there. I think they're, I, you can read the story, but I think a lot of them are using Alaska Airlines free standby fares for employees, which is nice. But here's what we want to train. These are the kind of people that we are right now, the, for the job roles that we want to train. And this is, and the iSchool, especially the MSIM program, MLIS as well, and informatics, is a very diverse group of folks from all over the world. Uh, I am on the MSIM admissions committee, and we had, we dropped a bit. I think we only had about 900 applications this year for 90 spots. So we uh, take only about 10% of the students that apply. So already that cut off, those of you in the audience who are MSIMers in the high school, already, and as I repeat to them often, they were chosen for their leadership abilities, for their uh, academic brain power, for their ability to learn. And so it's a very select group, but it comes from all over the world, which we're very excited about. People come to us with all different backgrounds, 
You don't necessarily have to an informatics degree to get an MSIM. They come from English, history, all over the, all over the CS, all over the place, but they want to learn more about these specialized topics. So our next steps, how are we doing on time? Pretty good, yeah? Our next steps, um, I wanna find out from you what other practices and skills are, are, are you expecting as an employer, as a team leader, as somebody out in the field working around. I see some uh, students here are gonna graduate this year. They're very anxious about getting a job. We wanna make sure that we're, we're in line with what you're asking for and what you're expecting. I know that's a broad list. Uh, you can certainly email me that list of what you're expecting and rather talk to you about it. But the idea is that we want to maintain a consistency between the students that we are, tur are turning out every year, which is a larger number every year. Uh, there's a rich iSchool community of graduates here in this area and around the country. And we've talked to them constantly about who are they hiring, what kind of person are they hiring. But we would like to know even more in advance to make sure that the classes that we're teaching are in line with the expectations of the employers in the community. And we want to align those courses. I want to add new courses <clears throat> that we don't have yet that you might come up to me and say, why don't you have a course in blah? I mean, why are not you, why, you know, do you have classes in data visualization? And the answer is, yes, we do. It's not here, it's not part of the IA program, but we might want to think about that. Uh, we want to continue to work with advisors like you guys, employers like you guys, experts like you guys, to keep our uh, curriculum fresh and meaningful. We never want to have a, a, a position we're in right now, which is we're playing catch up. We want to stay ahead of the game. We think the iSchool should be a leader, not a follower in this field. But we can only do that with, if we keep in touch with uh, people like you to keep telling us, why well, you should uh, focus more on this or that. So I know I finished a little early. I want to open up to some questions, if you have any right now, or you can certainly talk to me later. Yeah, absolutely. We, so we've got plenty of time for questions. Yep. Um, I just uh, would ask, Mike, that you just repeat the question. We are recording this. Got so it. If you'll just repeat I the question. can do that. Great. Absolutely. So throw something out, and we'll see if we can get it answered. Please. As a Good. So the question is, from an HCD perspective, <laughs> and I think the phrase was, why would you guys? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not taking offense to that. Uh, it's not an, I understand, I, no, I know. Uh, why would the iSchool want to teach, for example, a course in? Because we, well, any of it, we have usability testing, we go to the gamut, web design, yep. and you think you're going to demark from the back end from the front end. Correct. So Mm, okay. Right. And this, right. So we, where do we come off? I think I'm going to paraphrase. <laughs> where do we come off in the iSchool about wanting to step on the toes of other disciplines? That's not where we're at. So, number one, we're not the enemy. We're all on this together. We're all on this together. You know, go dogs. We're all on this together. But the question is valid because so oftentimes you'll hear, well, you guys are the information school. Why are you going to teach a course on, on interface design or user research methods or things like this, which would more traditionally be sent over to the HCD to handle at, honestly, that'd be fantastic. And the reason is, as I mentioned earlier, we have the, in the iSchool, we have the undercurrent, the foundation of information management as our basis. Everything we do is based on managing information, which is not just designing an interface. I'm not sullying that. It's not just designing an interface. It's not just doing persona development. It's not just doing user flows. It has that, plus the core information management foundation, plus a layer of business management that we also like to teach. So we teach students, for example, how to be consultants. We have courses on consulting, management, things like this. So it's not just the, the, the practice, so to speak. It's multi-layers underneath it that support it. Can we do as good a job as HCD does? I don't know. Right? I would say, yay, right? But we also don't want to force graduate students to decide and have to go two different places, or go one place or the other. So we're offering it not a light version, 
but a different version. Would it replace it? No. I would never say that our, our classes would replace classes from HCD or any other department. It's not our intent. Our intent is to layer that information management foundation underneath it and then teach the skill. It's a great question. I appreciate it, but that's kind of the reason why. Yeah. I think one of the biggest um, challenges in uh, corporations is and has been for a long time, it took them a long time to realize it. They realize it now, silos. And so yes. Exactly <laughs> what you're just talking about, um, but the curriculum design um, supports that, right? It mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's from first idea and, yep. and machine language all the way to use, right? Yep. If somebody does a great job of architecting something behind the, the screen and they're not working well with the, with the team that creates the interface, yep. then the user doesn't get served. And Absolutely. And corporations are suffering from that. Yeah, I agree. So I think curriculum, uh, the whole learning experience, the whole development experience, ideally takes that into account. You mm -hmm. mentioned catch-up. If, if a receiver is going out to try to catch a pass and the defense aims at where he is at the time they yep. first see him, he will be playing catch-up forever. Right. Um, so you have to pick a target that's not um, where the person is right now. Or in the, the situation I'm talking about, what we're talking about, don't ask corporations what they need because they're in a terrible position right now. They don't, they're, they're struggling. They don't know. If you aim at that, then you'll constantly be playing catch, catch up. up. I think what, what the uh, UW and programs like that need to do is chart a, a, a place down the, down the road where we all ought to be, where we all ought to be. True. And aim at that. Because yep. that's what corporations need. Yep, and I think that we're, we still d would be doing that, but we, want, we don't want to create courses that are so scoped that they're only going to be good for a year, and then next year they're gone. So our job is to teach how to think about these processes that I mentioned up here, such that the students we graduate are the advanced thinkers that go into corporations and say, yeah, this is what taxonomy and ontology have always meant, but here's how we can now use this and in integrate it with visualization tool integrated with a data management tool so we're not I don't think we're trying to get I don't, we are playing some catch-up we're not trying to aim for where the market is now we're trying to aim for where the market is which could be where it's gonna go where it's been we still have to teach that foundation stuff that students then take and interpret on in the marketplace as to how what kind of work they want to do and how they and how they take what we taught them and apply it to work. The point about silos is very good. I want to make sure that we're clear that we're not in our world teaching only this is how taxonomy and ontology work behind the scenes. We are also teaching and here's how it works with search. Here's how it works with naming conventions across databases. Here's how it works with an interface design such that navigation labeling can be done more correctly rather than just from a point of view of outside in. So I totally appreciate what you're saying, and the question I guess would just be around: We, you know, are we aiming for? Are we aiming too low? Are we aiming for the present and not the future? Our job is to train for the present, and encourage students the and give students the ability to think for the future, if that makes sense. I mean, I, we're, we're, that's the direction I like to go in my classes. I always like to I always like to ask more questions than I give answers because we're trying to train students how to frame and think about problems rather than just train them how to solve a problem immediately. I hope that goes down that path. I hope it does, we'll, we'll see. But asking employers what they want, employers will say everything. You know, we want the smartest and brightest for $5 an hour, and that's just, I mean, that's what employers want. What we listen to is, well, what does that mean? Like, if you've got siloed information stores right now, how is that problem gonna be solved, and are we training students to potentially go solve that problem? Good. Any other questions? Yes.
Well, they can. You can the caps in 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 the MSIM program. Capstone can be made up of people from different areas, but not. I don't think it's. You can do capstone from MSIM and MLIS. Two different two different branches. You can even better. I just learned something from another former student of mine in the back there. But the idea is that we don't want to. I don't think we could do with different programs, but I think we can do it within the iSchool. So the answer is yes, we can do that. You know, different programs, because you talk about the silos, yep. corporations. I work for both, so I don't know. Yep. <laughs> it's fine. So, but I mean, like, if you could do it across the developers, like, if the, the whole university could come together and find a way to put the different things together like they would in the real world, you guys would really have something. Yes. I, I, I agree with that. There's no reason the curriculum couldn't be all project-based. It's that, you know, that's different oh, here we go. right now. Yeah. But, but it certainly could be that way, which I think speaks to what you're saying. It could, yeah, absolutely. And I think we are in agreement at an academic university level. That's not my call. Now, if it was, <laughs> that's not my call. I would, if it was, I would have every, everybody in, in this interest area together. But that's not how things work. Are you looking just to the master's program, or are you looking at possibly some kind of postgraduate or mm. We have PhD students in the, both MSIM and MLIS programs. So PhD students are involved in this. But for now, this is just, just at the MSIM, the master's level, the graduate level. That's where I teach. Although next year, I'll be teaching undergraduates as well. That's a different, entirely different um, thing. PhD students tend to be a little bit more focused on their own particular research. Some of it includes it, some of it doesn't. But PhDs are not necessarily in a track like this. Yeah, good question. Is that it? Please come up and talk to me afterwards if you'd like. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mike.